Hey, pull up a chair. It's Hacks on Tap with David Axelrod and Mike Murphy. Before I was elected as vice president, before I was elected as United States senator, I was the elected attorney general, as I've mentioned, of California. And before that, I was a courtroom prosecutor. In those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. Fraudsters who ripped off consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. Welcome, Kamala Harris, to the presidential race. Uh, Mike Murphy, like, my head is spinning, man. It's been some (laughs) 10 days here, huh? Yeah, you know, who would have thunk it? I mean, I remember a couple of weeks before the debate, we had some blowhard on the show was predicting a really bad debate and there'd be a big onslaught of criticism and Biden might have been forced to drop out. And, you know, we scoffed. We'll never have um, that asshole again. Yeah, no, no. Oh, wait, I don't wait, know that was that. you? Yeah. I think it was you. Oh, <laughs> I don't know yeah. how it happened. So oh, I've avenged my yeah. Nikki Haley prediction by calling this thing like Crescid, <laughs> despite yes. the scoffs of disbelief from many other experts. But anyway, here we are. The campaign has done a neck-snapping 180, at least in terms of enthusiasm. On the other hand, this is uh, this is going to be a high-velocity rocket, and we needed a high-velocity pundit to help us figure this out. A reporter, a bon yeah. vivant, writes for a great new uh, online site named after Don Rickles. I mean, and who since could it we be? Could, and since could we that? couldn't find anybody like that, we just had to <laughs> yeah. settle for John Heilman. Yeah, well, yeah. we have his number. Hey, John. Hey, you guys, I heard uh, I heard uh, Kamala Harris talking about perpetrators of all kinds, and now here I am surrounded by perpetrators of all kinds. So we, have a, we have a trio of perpetrators, of all-purpose yes, exactly. perpetrators here. It's fantastic. Exactly. We're actually doing this, as, we're doing this as our community service, actually, now that you Incredible. mention it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, later we got to paint some parking meters, and then we're done for the week. <laughs> I, oh, keep thinking okay. I'm just, well, I keep, keep thinking we're just a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to get familiar with all these new memes. I think also we're, we're all brat now is that what the we are yeah. brat yes brat? yeah yes yeah yeah what's the name uh, of that I'm performer who endorsed her? i can't even you're our, I feel like- you're our, you are our link to the cultural world here heilman what's the name of that woman that the the performer who Do- endorsed Do- her and called her brat it's got a bunch of uh, Roman numerals in it. I don't know, but I just think of this should be. Uh, it's Charlie X C X, I believe is her name, and she's. Uh, we we are like the brats on tap. Brats on tap here. That's what this is. <laughs> exactly. We should rename the show Brats yeah. on Tap. That'd be like Brats on Tap. I've just been to Milwaukee, so I feel like I'm very connected to brat culture right now. Um, but anyway, you know what? Yes, this, is, this is actually when you when you assess this the change in the race, uh, the fact that she has these links to contemporary culture is like not a small thing you know it's not a small thing in the tiktok world and people i said something in my column on sunday i said that she had youth and vigor and i got trashed on the right they're like she's 60 years old i'm like hey guys number one i'm 58 and i'm loving this whole (laughs) humble young thing i love it she's 59 we call you kid over here and secondly, compared to fucking Donald Trump, she's like a, well, she's like a teenager. She's a teenager. There's, that's all that matters. There's been a big boomerang snap here because the Democrats went from, my God, we got the mummy and we're doomed. And nobody seems to care about Trump's age. And then Joe Biden, and by the way, salute to Joe Biden. He did yes, something sir. we have not yes, seen sir. in American politics for many years. He put the country and the party above his own career yeah, and, and, and his own needs. And that that yeah. is a Thank rare you, Mr. damn President. thing. Yes. Yeah, exactly. A real president move there. So s- salute to him. But now... The whole, the big rubber band has snapped the other way. Now, Trump is the old guy, 23 skid. Yes. And she plays <laughs> younger than she even is. So the age monster that was eating Trump is now going to pivot around, and we're going to see what it does to hopeless throwback to Queens in 1961 Donald Trump on, on their argument every issue, too. And I know we're going to get into all this, but that power is tremendous. And you can tell it's. It's shaking Donald Trump. You know, we've talked a lot about how the Trump campaign has been well managed by Susie Wiles and uh, uh, Chris LaCivita. But now for the first time, they're going to have bucking Bronco ready to go out and do dumb things, Trump, really out of control. So that that's one of the many things to watch here because the energy has done a massive, massive 180. There's danger in it, too. But it's uh, it's a whole new campaign now. Yeah, I'm in $100 million in the first day. 
Uh, she raised 60,000 volunteers. And there is a palpable, uh, a palpable sense of excitement uh, among Democrats who were moribund uh, before, uh, you know, the day before that. Uh, the question is, uh, how long does that last? How far does it go? Is it a sugar high or is it a sustainable thing? I keep thinking a couple of things. One, you know, people have gotten in the habit of trashing big donors of late because they're, you know, in the period when when uh, many number of people were saying that that for a variety of reasons and none of them ever having to do with any distaste or disrespect for 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 Joe Biden, but just were like looking at the situation and saying, guys, like this is this is not a tenable situation here. And 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 look, is she is is the vice president risky? Yeah. And, and is sticking with Joe Biden riskier? Yes. When people were saying that, you got in this kind of because the because Joe Biden for a little while was trashing elites. Um, you know, people started trashing big donors who were trying to force him off the ticket. Hey, look, the donor class was right about this. And and I'll note, David, in addition to all this great grassroots money that they've raised, I saw a thing yesterday, $150 million pledged to the $150 million pledged to the main uh, by the super PAC, also in that same period. So you're talking about a quarter of a billion dollars. That has been either raised or committed in the span yeah, of less than of less than forty eight hours. That alone, I mean, it's not nothing. I mean, these are not. This is not. It's no, not it's, tri- a, it's a, not a tr- measure of all it's, the energy that was dissipating is now focused. In fact, we've started our high own and thing low, because high and low, we, right? It, we've started citizens against stupid haters. Make your check payable to cash and just send it to us at Hacks on Tap because we're Ser- we're seriously the fight too. But this is this kind of energy is a real deal. And, it it and counts. You, and I would just say that that the, the, you know the we are in this. I guess the analogy has been drawn by some people. We're in this kind of British snap election mode here, or European snap election. You know, a lot of the countries are used to this, and we've never seen anything like it. So, to your guys' point, sugar high. Hey, you know, sugar highs can last for a little while, and they don't need the sugar high. This doesn't have to. Yes, it's yeah, going to be. We're going to get. It is a sprint. We're going to get. It's going to be had October. A, I had and, a and, Snickers right before this podcast, so we're going to test that proposition. We're right waiting now. for I, it to I, kick in. <laughs> <laughs> it's about halfway through. But you know, uh, I think there's some. I, I honestly really do think there's some advantage. In some ways, there are people who've said, and I think, look, there are a lot of Democrats who would say, and I think everyone on this show right now would have rather not gone through the agony of those three weeks of Joe Biden resisting and digging in his heels. And everyone, I thought on some level, you would have thought, well, it's platonic ideal. He wakes up, you know, 72 hours after the debate and says, you know what? I watched the debate. People are right. I'm going to make a graceful exit. But yeah, well, that's the Swedish Joe Biden. We have the Irish one. So right. that, that but, wasn't going to happen. And he told but, George he didn't watch the debate. So maybe they should have made him. But the waiting for these three weeks, actually shortening, foreshortening the the time, the, the sprint gets shorter. In some ways, him delaying could be an advantage for her. Yeah, although, you know, that I think that also, well, it certainly was an advantage for her because the shorter the timetable, the more obvious a choice she was and the, the, the less feasible uh, kind of open convention scenario that some right. had talked about would be. This played out to her advantage and they were ready. I mean, they, it was, it was, it was shock and awe to see those endorsements rolling in by the minute after. And she was making the delegation pushing the right trick. Yeah. One phone call done, you know, one phone call done. Now, now all this said, there's a lot of, I mean, uh, we, uh, kudos to them for, ro- but this is a stampede. It's not, was not a thoughtful, like who's the strongest candidate in the party and how do we win? This is an emotional stampede of, we got to solve this in two days and it's got to be her going, going, gone. But Mike, so, here, let me see. I saw, Mike, I, I saw you, you were tweeting about this and I totally, I, I, I had great sympathy for your point of view about this, which was, you know, are you guys going too fast? Are you stampeding? Shouldn't you st- think and sit and think about it for a little bit? And I, I have great sympathy for that point of view because obviously she has certain, which I'm sure we're going to talk about, certain distinct political liabilities. But honestly, if you're the Democratic Party collectively, if you're the hive mind of the Democratic Party, and you've just undertaken this incredibly risky venture, which is to take down a sitting president out of his as position as the top of right, the ticket. Right. You want to land be- it, zip it up, be done. Yes, and you just and yeah, look, and, and she happened. is, and she's a known quantity. I mean, after all that risk, you want to try to de-risk, right? And and right. and and she has liabilities, she has assets, but they're all pretty much known. We well, understand she's I, got well, a, she got a low ahead, ceiling, Jen. also has a high floor. I mean, you look at yeah. her and go, 
at least we know we're getting here. There's going to be no Jack in the box surprises popping out of the closet. On, Actually, on, we, we, on her. we don't, you know, yeah. um, we might the, be among the, among the assets that we, uh, that I think are undervalued here, having done a bunch of these is like, she has, is it swum in the deep end of the pool and no one else has, I mean, that's it what is, I mean. Yes. No, no, but nobody understands, just how hard these presidential races are. And any other office you've run for is double A, maybe triple A, but it's completely different when you get to the major leagues and you're playing in the World Series. And in a short run-up, I mean, if you had a primary campaign, people could hone their skills and get used to the deep end of the pool. There is no time for that. And she does know, you know, she almost drowned in the deep end of the pool. She ran a terrible yeah. campaign in 2019. She wasn't ready for she that race. She kind of did drown. And then the first right. half, she got to a dog paddle. We have not, the, yesterday might have been the first real swim we've seen. You know seen. what I think, Mike? I think, yes. Yesterday she gave the best speech. You know, it was it was her reintroduction to the nation, and she wove her biography together into a really devastating comparative with Trump, and then she uh, pushed the thing into a question of past and future uh, in a way I thought was very, very effective. I think she's been doing a lot better for some time. It's just people haven't been uh, paying attention. But, well, which is uh, great, because if she's actually better than the perception, uh, the, then the expectations thing, and, and if she can have a good 10-day run here, because um, she's got to be defined. For all, I, I agree with you. She's been in the wind tunnel, uh, kind of the, the AAA baseball wind tunnel of VP. But now... Now, if she performs, it, it, it's going to compound upon uh, compound upon itself and and do the, really well. The thing we'll that the out. thing that plagued her in the last campaign was she didn't see, she didn't feel comfortable. Uh, she wasn't comfortable when she spoke. She didn't seem authentic, and uh, and uh, this this time when you know what we saw yesterday was a candidate who seemed absolutely uh, comfortable and relaxed and you know, knew what she wanted to say and uh, was comfortable with what she was. She she was, the words seemed more organic to who she is, and that's what you need to compete here. But look, let, okay, can now, I, let me, can now, I, can I just get, let me get one quick thing in, just very quick, just to play, just to use the sports and have the baseball analogy a little bit more, right? There's no question that, that she was not a good presidential candidate. I have seen her I mean, I've known her since about 1998. So I've seen her. I've seen her play in the California, in the in the Bush leagues, and in, in as a San Francisco prosecutor. I've seen her play as an attorney general, as a senator, as a bad presidential candidate, except for a couple of moments. But what's really, I think, is missed is that she, as vice president, which is not the World Series at Yankee Stadium, but it's major league pitching. Right after Dobbs, she became she's better. I mean, I traveled with her on a post Dobbs event for the circus, and I was struck by now is that that's not again, it's not the World Series, it's not what she's going to go through right now, but it's not you know uh, the 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 Grand Rapids Rotary Club either. It's not you know not to diss yeah. Gretchen Whitmer, but it's not it's not what Josh Shapiro does or Gretchen Whitmer does or 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 Bashir or any of these other people. She's been playing at you know post Dobbs as the the tip of the spear for the administration on that. She has done a lot of travel. She has been in a lot of places. She's the first. You know, but but president or vice president to ever go to an abortion clinic. I mean, that's that's she's got national coverage in this ramp up the last year, and she has get it been getting progressively better. Is she going to be flawless? She's not going to be flawless, but she's better than people. She has gotten better and a little bit under the radar, but above the radar at well, the same time now, over this last it, year. It, she's yeah, it, it, you know, if she's undervalued, we're we're now going to she's going to go on the scale in the X ray, and we're going to find out. What worries me to be. You know, we've we've done the upside, and she had a great day yeah, yesterday, and they framed right. that speech well. By the way, I don't love the uh, the prosecutor thing. Is I think more of an inside message to the party. I'm going to win. I'm ready to fight this guy. I like the second half of her speech better. What worries me about the prosecutor thing? She was the moderate San Francisco prosecutor, and then she pivoted more to the center as attorney general. Now, being the moderate San Francisco means you're you're only a communist five days out of seven. They're going to find some Willie Horton, let a killer out of jail stuff with her. They're, they're, believe me, that the Republicans know that playbook. The so communists, by the way, the, commun the communists seem pretty draconian in their, oh, with no, their justice no, they, system yes, there. Yes. But, I used yeah. to walk around Moscow in the old days waving $100 bills. Uh, no crime at all. 
uh, except thought crime, which they love to prosecute. Uh, so my point is, I wouldn't bet the ranch on that because she's going to get a second look into all that stuff now. I would. I, I like the other stuff she did, future, past. That, that's where it all fits together beautifully. And I'm on your side, he's on his side, which Biden had started to prosecute. So, and Dobbs, man, she can bang that gong every day of the week. He's going to take you back to 1955 where men make all the decisions for women. You know, it, there is a golden campaign there, and we saw the hint of it in the second half. Well, um, look, look, I, go ahead. Then I'm, no, no, no. In, 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 in the, yeah, but um, on the prosecutorial thing, listen, I always thought in 2020 that that, that she should have leaned into her record, not away from it. Be, and she did. She ran away from her prosecutorial record because it was a left primary and she was worried about it. Interestingly, the Trump people have signaled that they're going to attack her from the left, at least in their communications to young black voters who they're trying to. Appeal yeah, that's to too clever she, by half. Yeah, well, but but in, in any case. Her work there, but particularly as attorney general, when she went off after these big interests, you know, on on, on housing and health care and other issues, those set her up uh, very, very well. The thing that worries me uh, is a couple. One is uh, she is not she's not a clean turn the page candidate. And let's yeah, listen no, to can, right, let, let's right. listen to a little of the Trump this is this was the Trump media uh, that was uh, aired hours after it became clear that she was going to be uh, the candidate. Kamala was in on it. She covered up Joe's obvious mental decline. Our president is in good shape, in good health, tireless, vibrant, and I have no doubt about the strength of the work that we have done. But Kamala knew Joe couldn't do the job, so she did it. Look what she got done. A border invasion, runaway inflation, the American dream, dead. They created this mess. They no, Kamala owns this failed record. Make America Great Again Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. That's kind of a green room ad to me, you know, to feed the Washington Echo Chamber about the cover up <laughs> and all that. The, 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 go ahead, but it's... I, I can tell you, I can tell you that um, I think from folks out there that I've talked to who have actually who who are already testing these ads this has been an argument that actually resonates more than i thought it would the whole idea that they knew all along that you know it was a weekend at bernie's thing and she was in on it but the bigger thing is them tying her to these issues Order. and you know there's a there right. was another video another video that uh i i thought i had sent uh, in which they really went after her on the immigration thing in a very, very brutal way. So, you know, she can't, this is, she is not a turn the page candidate right. in the way that would be cleaner. And she's going to have to figure out how to navigate that and fire back. And in some places may, maybe she charts her own course here moving forward, uh, uh, well, that's you know. uh, just quickly. And then John, of course, weigh in. That's the biggest thing for all the talk about. And it's it's legitimate that, oh, she's played at the big league. She's semi vetted. A governor would turn the page. This is the 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 junior partner of the Biden Harris administration, which means the inflation and the border. It, it, she's going to it's going to be there. And it's a legit attack. The question is, can she get the new fresh Dobbs and her stuff to eclipse that? Because if we're still doing the economy referendum on Biden, that's quicksand for her, too. And that was the biggest downside. That and performance skills are a question mark uh, in picking her, I think. I li- I would li- I- I've always wanted there to be a situation where a vice president could, uh, who was in the situation like, you know, an Al Gore or whoever, could come forward and basically be sort of like, you know, for the last four years, there have been stories written about how uh, all these snipey stories written about how there's tension between me and the president. And we've always denied them and said, yeah, we're really close. And I have my weekly lunch and everything. OK, guys, time to come clean. I barely yeah. know the president. It's president all true. Barely, I can't stand president, the president. President fucking yeah. hates me. I barely know yeah. him. I've been pissed at him the whole time. I've been trying to poison his food for the last month. I'm finally ready to come clean. <laughs> all the shit he did wrong. I don't own that stuff yeah. at all. I had nothing to yeah. do with it. If it were up to me, we would have done a whole different thing. The border seems like the biggest problem. I think there's a way at least you could message around. I mean, look, the notion that the that inflation, I mean, inflation is obviously a huge problem for this administration as a political matter. We've talked about it a hundred times. Economic management, I don't think, and maybe this is too much of a green room argument, but you know, the notion that the that that this this is the now the Harris economy strikes me as a little bit hard to sell. 
The border, though, you'll see lots of there is lots of video out there, you know, where I think early on, because someone will check me on this, I think, you know, she did an interview uh, at some point early in the administration where after he had said that she was that he he Joe Biden had said to the vice president, you know, you're in charge of the border. And she did an interview she, where she admitted she never been to the border. I mean, it was like, no, there's, no, there's, just, there's, there's, there's more there's there's t- there's tougher video out there on, on her because that was very much a thing he put on her plate. And then she, you know, there, there's going to be a lot more grist to that mill grist for that mill, I think, than there is necessarily on the economic stuff. But, yeah, I agree with you, Mike. It's this is the thing. She got to figure out a way to untie that knot where it doesn't look too much, where everything doesn't become the Biden Harris, this, the Biden Harris, that I'm interested in what Axe said though, about, about this, the cover up notion, whether that actually cuts. I don't, I don't know the, I don't know. See, whether it does I, I or think not. it cuts right now, but I think the whole issue of Joe Biden and age is fading fast. Now the Republicans are going to try, we well, need him out of the oval. He just tried to attack Canada thinking he was pushing the button for applesauce, but that's horseshit. And, and I, I think, the the grip Biden's relevance every day to the headlines should be supplanted by her campaign of energy and change if they're good and I think they 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 figure that out. Yeah. So I think I, the uh, teeth of the whole Biden thing will fade in the rearview mirror. We'll, we'll see, but the border stuff is 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 serious, and and they they need to have an answer. To Heilman's point, this is the other video that they began airing like pretty quickly after. Harris serviced as the candidate. If you ever wondered how Joe Biden could get the border so screwed up, remember, he had help. <laughs> Here's Biden appointing Kamala Harris to be his border czar to deal with illegal immigration. And here are a record number of illegal immigrants, 10 million and counting, flooding over the border after Harris was put in charge of stopping illegal immigration. <laughs> To be fair, Harris got off to a rough start by ignoring the border. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, I'm here in Guatemala today. I, at some point, you know, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole, this whole, this whole thing about the border. We've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. <laughs> so probably the worst moment of her uh, yeah, that was, tenure that was as worse. vice president. That was even worse, that, that was even worse yeah. than I remembered it. I remember it being pretty Start bad. Start with the royal yeah. we, oh, then yes. stretch all the vowels. The waiter, there's a fly in my soup, <laughs> and then throw in Europe to cap yeah. the thing. So, yeah, yeah, that's a trifecta there. So, you know, they, but, that's a pretty tough attack and i think you're going to see more of that one of the things that concerns me is as they get organized here they're basically not on the air uh and they are being attacked at a pretty significant uh but don't rate. you think they will be with you know well, they, they know they, that they, they, yeah. They, yeah but i mean i'm saying that like i would this shouldn't be a matter of weeks it should be a matter no it should of, be tomorrow <laughs> right tonight exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly so that's something uh to be uh uh that's something to be concerned about. Um, but, you know, just another point that they have a money cannon now they can probably sustain if they can do the 10 days right. So I would not be conservative and I would blow out the door, spend it all, and then raise another hundred if you have. But to. you know what? They have to have an operation to do that. Mike Donilon, the way the ads work before, this president's guy, Mike Donilon, would work with w- one producer, tell him his ideas. The guy would produce stuff. And Mike would pick an ad and they put it on the air. They don't, Mike's not there, I don't think, anymore. And, uh, you know, they've got to very quickly build an operation uh, to do this. Perhaps the Super PAC should and yeah, will they should have, fill right, in that, right. uh, fill in the, uh, uh, fill in the breach. But listen, guys, there are a couple of uh, things that are coming up that uh, will, I think, uh, influence the course of this race. One of them is the pick of a VP. Uh, and generally, that's a superfluous thing. This seems more important to me uh, this time. Yeah, it's her first big decision, the, yeah. the normal definer. Um, yeah. And I, I just want to interject one thing before we pivot to VP, yeah, which sure. is important. I, I just think the other here, – here's, here's the scary part with her, I think. Trump is going to overplay it because, you know, she's already got a big condo in his head. He doesn't do well head. with women either. The, yeah, the, and he doesn't handle it well, so Trump will – the Republican Party knows in its DNA how to run against a, a DA from San Francisco, but Trump will go 
crazy. He already has. Uh, she's got to be very careful as Trump interjects race into this thing. Uh, she's got to keep her eye on square America. And if it becomes the hippest, uh, you know, what brat and pop stars and all that, and we're with it, you're not. The energy in that is old versus young, but it can get into a bad corner pretty quick that it's a woke paradise of a nobody campaign. nobody is nobody's and better equipped to speak for square america than you mike murphy i am so. the god king <laughs> yes, of square exactly. america so on exactly. behalf of all of us in our shorts and black socks uh <laughs> let, let me let me tell you two downtown the brown hipsters, shoes should go though by the way i like it that, that murphy Murphy proved it right there by saying brat rather than brat, which I think is really cool. Which is really cool. He really was was thinking about the brat. He went for the sausage thing. All right. We're going to leave for a minute to pay the power bill, and then we'll be right back. Hey, Axel, I bet you didn't know this, but Lumen is the world's first handheld metabolic coach. Now, you're thinking, what the hell is that? I will explain it to you. It is a device that measures your metabolism through your breath. And on the app, because it's all connected to your phone, it lets you know. What if you're breathless? These are the kind of tricky science questions we'll get a conference call to <laughs> the folks at Lumen to figure out. But fundamentally, it uses your breath to measure your metabolism. With an app, it then lets you know if you're burning fat or carbs and gives you tailored guidance to improve your nutrition, workouts, sleep, and even, and we're going to need this, stress management. Yeah, you know, I let you go on because uh, you were so enthusiastic. But I actually know about this because I have one of these. You do? And yes, I do. And uh, what I know is your metabolism is your body's engine. It's how your body turns the food you eat into fuel that keeps you going. Because, Mike, your metabolism is at the center of everything your body does. Optimal metabolic health translates to a bunch of benefits, including easier weight management, uh, hint, hint, improved energy levels, better fitness results, better sleep, etc. And Lumen gives you recommendations to improve your metabolic health. All you have to do is breathe into your Lumen first thing in the morning, and you'll know what's going on with your metabolism, whether you're burning mostly fats or carbs. Then Lumen gives you a personalized nutrition plan for that day based on your measurements. And man, I need that. You can also breathe into it before and after workouts and meals so you know exactly what's going on in your body in real time. And Lumen will give you tips to keep you on top of your health game. You know what amazes me? How just a few weeks with the Lumen and you can go on forever. So if you want to take the next step in improving your health, go to lumen.me slash hacks to get 15% off your Lumen. That's L-U-M-E-N dot M-E slash hacks for 15% off your purchase. Thank you, Lumen, for sponsoring this episode. This thing just brings everything you guys just said brings together a, a bunch of different things that are worth spending just a couple seconds on. One of which is in that ad, which which I I'm not I can't see it right, but I can hear it. There's one superfluous layer in there, which is the cackling, like the yes. making fun of her laugh, yes. right? The the immigration stuff in there is brutal for her, right? On its own, just terrible. She's terrible in that in that. So like maybe the worst moment of her vice presidency, right? Right. But then they have to layer on this thing that every woman you know is going to see as misogynist, which is like the making fun of her laugh. That's like the extra layer of Trumpy. Like yeah, let's just go a little further and just mock her. No, it's in, in a way, that, in a way that's clumsy gonna, white guys. I totally right, agree, and totally. they're going to overplay their hand I, her smile is great it says young energy the audio yes. not so great but you know the campaign should be able she's to not work doing with as that. much right. anymore they, by the way i think she's yeah. she's she's learned a few things but here go back to this other question that, that david just raised which was you know she doesn't have a team right now and and i, I actually before we whatever else we're going to be doing here i want to i'd like to hear what you guys have to say about this because it seems like she's inheriting the 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 bulk of the biden operation you know you said mike Donald's not there. There's going to be a few people who are obviously going to, who are not going to well, stay Jenna there. Jenna Malik Dillon is staying at least in title. She, I don't know yes, at least in title. She doesn't really have, I mean, she has had uh, strategists that she's worked with in the past. There's also famously, she's had a lot of difficulty with oh, staff retention over the course right. of her career. But so it's not like she's got a, uh, 
uh, a Carl Rove or a, a, a James Carville or a, a, a who I take your pick, a Doug Sosnick. She's not. She doesn't have somebody, a guru, who she's going to want to bring in and say, "This is my new chief strategist." At least, at least to well, my she knowledge, her sister. And so she, that is well, um, that's a different that's a different thing, Mike. Don't go. That, that's I just, scary Beltway talk there because that's but, that's but, the fear and that's the, the legacy from last time. Yes. Maybe she's learned. But like yesterday on 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 uh, David Axelrod's least favorite morning show, Morning Joe. Um, you know, Joe Scarborough. I, 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 I'm joking. Minded. It was a joke. I always joke. watch to see what the elites are saying. Yes, I. <laughs> but yeah. Joe was, but Joe was sort of half kidding, half jokingly. I think launching the draft pluff campaign, which is like this. There's a lot of people talking about the notion that how do we bring everybody in all hands on deck moment? You know, who are the strategists who could come in to supplement the current team? You know, and and David, you know, you and 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 the thing, the core of this that I think is there's a, a core of truth to uh, to it is that you guys on the Obama team dealt constantly and successfully in the end with the young first African American yeah, totally. nominee you know and dealing with all of the race and all of the 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 the, the combination of of hot button and 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 div- div- divisive racist uh issues that that you could be thrown some sub rosa some above the above the above the ground who can i mean are they do you think that they're ready for that because he is trump is going to both in a vicious yeah, way and also in an I, I, listen i i the thing that i that 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 would concern me when i was watching the early going was the degree to which there were so many people out there who were who were supporters of her touting the historic nature of her candidacy, saying, you know, Dems can't pass her over because she's the first black woman. Right. No, there was an argument like, no, about go the out right there. to have it. I mean, the, when the right answer is, you know, why she's the strongest candidate, right? What are, what are the attributes she's bringing to this that are that that make her the strongest candidate? We spoke about some of them earlier we didn't talk about that at all in the obama campaign we never talked about the historic nature of his candidacy he used to say i'm of the black com- i'm proudly of the black community but i'm not limited to it i'm running for president of the united states not to be the first black president of the united states that's the you know uh, to mike's point the the country is bigger than just the african american community and you know and liberals who who uh, for whom this is a um, an incentive, and uh, so I, I think they have to resist that. To your question, uh, John, I I don't know. Uh, I mean, I had to say that I was very heartened by the speech she made yesterday because it was right right where it should be. Uh, it was right where it should be. It was not about that. It was about right. the work she had done, uh, you know, and how that contrasts with uh, Trump. And, you know, she didn't do any of that. My view is if people are jazzed by the historic nature of her candidacy, they've got eyes, they can see, they know. You don't yeah, you have to make that, that for point. free. You, you, you don't. Do. You yeah. do. And so, you know, that's uh, now in you know, I don't know what's going to happen over there. You know, I revere David. He was my partner for years. You know, um, uh, you know, we had a great partnership in that campaign. Uh, and I think he would be an asset to any campaign that he was involved in. How they use him, uh, you know, because I do, you know, I don't think Jen O'Malley, Dylan, I know her as well. Uh, she's She's smart and tough and experienced. And I don't think she's hanging around. Uh, to be a potted plant. She's hanging around to run the campaign. So how they organize and stuff, I don't know, but they've got to make a quick uh, decision. Are are we going to see, do you guys think we're going to see like, is America about to, is America and the hacks on tap audience, if they don't already know him, are we all going to get familiar real quick with Ace Smith? Is that going to be no, a No, I don't a, think a, so. I, I don't know that, I don't think her team, that Ace we should point out. Is, There's a lot is of a, turbulence there. Right? Yeah, He's a regular listener, so Ace, if you want very to uh, successful, call uh, in, you uh, can. Very successful strategist and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, formerly an Governor opposition Newsom research now. guy from uh, California, and he was he and his firm uh, were very deeply involved in her campaign uh, last time. I'm not sure they'd be involved 
this time. But we'll. I mean, this we'll is the see. great Kremlinology question, though, it, and it's not mm-hmm. only if Pluff is the joint; he's very talented, good friend of the show. Will he have the authority, or will will people in campaign say we just need to put him in the window? And he's not dumb enough to fall for that. But, Gen, but, Gen O'Malley you know, Dillon is a down. worked for and with uh, uh, David in the campaign. Yeah. And sure. uh, she, uh, I think they have a very good relationship, and I don't think David's going to be a part of an effort to kind of shove her out in any way. So uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, there's just got to be clear authority. But yeah. these things cannot be subtle. There has to be somebody in charge, and the problem last time was nobody I was in charge, and it changed have... every week. And then, So know... that is candidate-driven. Let me just finish. Yeah. So has she changed enough to reward that? Uh, cause this thing, they're going to have bad days too. I mean, I worry about the stampede a little cause before her speech, I thought, oh my God, is she's going to get defined as a DEI candidate? I would have got Pritzker to run just to have somebody to beat. So she had a big win and a credential going into the convention. So we're we'll see the messaging seems pretty good, but she's on definitional thin ice right now. And these are huge decisions. And they don't have any time. So yeah. it's the first real test. One, 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 just one optimistic note on this. What uh, I think that speech was written by her communications director, Brian Fallon, who we know from previous campaigns. He, you know, he, he, and I think he's come over. He did a good he, job. He, he did a good job. On that. A, Brian Fallon's a pro. Yeah. So listen, on the VP thing, as you, we started down this road, you're right, Mike, it's the first presidential decision you make. And it's a signal about, how you're going to govern. Uh, and, you know, there's a list of people out there. I honestly think that there are two most serious candidates on it. Uh, and one is Governor <laughs> Shapiro of Pennsylvania, and the other is Mark Kelly. Astronaut Mark the, Kelly. I knew you were going to go there. Senator from Arizona. You know, you've, yeah. I've talked him up here. Before. I think some weeks ago I said, boy, if you want to screw Trump, uh, he would be, Kelly would be a good candidate because astronaut, fighter, pilot, husband of... Uh, Gabby Giffords, that you know, who heroically survived an assassination attempt, former congresswoman, and has become a leader on the gun safety issue. He's moderate. He's good on the border, and he's from a battleground state. And he's an expert on uh, on national security issues. All those things still pertain here. And if you want to send a signal of moderation, uh, he would be uh, an excellent choice. Josh Shapiro is a <coughs> Incredibly talented young leader from Pennsylvania, new, f- relatively new governor. Um, he would be, uh, you know, I don't think you can win this race without winning Pennsylvania if you're the Democrats. No. And uh, yeah, so I, I, he may give her her best. She's not a natural Pen- Pennsylvania candidate. He may give her her best chance to win that state. Yeah, I think it's a tricky call. I mean, Kelly on paper is really good. I, I don't know as an athlete how good he is um, politically, uh, you know, but he's, a, he's definitely a contender. You can, you can see the checkerboard there. Shapiro, same thing. I think there's an interesting Buttigieg angle because that ticket is very modern in tomorrow. It might push that envelope too far. Yeah. But boy, it's a future. Well, you talk about America athletes. The he's the be- and, and a massive athlete. Just put yeah. a mic in front of him. And yeah. so I, I would not underestimate he, the idea. He's been out here the him. last 48 hours or so. You know, he was on Bill Maher at the end of the week. Yeah, and, yeah. So he's uh, he, and he's and He was fast and, to endorse her. Yeah. By the way, can uh, I just, me before you go, I've got to throw in this, uh, this great exchange when this VP thing was going on with Jared Polis, the uh, governor yeah, of funny. Colorado. If she asked you to be her running mate, would you accept? Well, Dan, we're, we're, not, we're not even there, Dan. I appreciate the question. I love the job I'm doing. You know I love Colorado. It's great. Obviously, if, if somebody asks, I take a serious look at it, but uh, my phone hasn't run yet. Look, if they, if they do the polling and it turns out that they need a, a 49-year-old balding gay Jew from Boulder, Colorado, they got my number. <laughs> Well, that's it. Then yeah, we, we yeah, have a yeah. VP. That the master stroke. No, but uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, Buttigieg would be uh, would the, if you want someone who can carry a lot of water for you and, and carry the attack on TV and so on. Yeah, no, uh, huge athlete. And he's from the and Midwest. Turn the page. And, but yeah. you know, the issue Michigan. is: is it too right. much? Is it too much diversity? Right. Push right? the envelope. He's, he's gay and. Uh, 
you know, so that's a, a calculation they would have I, to I make. I like the modern power of it, and I like his ability to perform because I think he's a better performer than Kelly, but the Kelly resume, the computer likes it better. I hate to, uh, I hate to agree with Mike about anything, but um, I, I do think that – I'll say three things. One, um, I, I was, was that – covered the Mark Kelly reelect, reelect and, and got to watch him a little bit close. I think he's pr- tremendous on paper, and everything I saw about him as a political athlete in terms of the debates that he did, everything else, I always thought, eh, he's not quite not, – I mean, he's nowhere near as good as Shapiro, for instance, just as a performer. Mm-hmm. Shapiro is a much better performer. Pennsylvania, I totally agree with you, David. Obviously crucial. Is there, do you get dragged into something that we've all forgotten Democrats were worried about, but one thing that was hurting Democratic enthusiasm for a long time, which was the war, you know, you've got, you know, hit the, your bet, you're now you're in another, you're back to an internecine yeah, Democratic he's a squabble over. Backwards. He's, it feels like you're having now a discussion about the Middle East that you don't really want to have within the party and you worry about, about young energy in the party, which she is now capturing very quickly, just, just putting him on the ticket, but kind of screw that up. And to Mike's point, the thing that I agree with, I was talking to, to Bob Costa yesterday and, and I asked Costa about how he, on my podcast, and I asked Costa how he thought about these things. He said, I think about, when I think about po- politicians, I think about their ability to withstand political pain and their capacity for political imagination. And in that category, this is a test of political imagination in some sense. I mean, how far do you want to push political imagination is, is the question. But Buttigieg is the political imagination pick. I sat yeah, there and watched future. him on that Bill Maher, on Bill Maher the other night. He was fucking good. Mm-hmm. I mean, he did a, a riff no, on J.D. Great. Vance. He did a yeah, riff on J.D. He's Vance. he's ready to take on Vance in a debate, and Vance is good, too. And, he did, you know, he did a riff veterans. on Vance that was cutting and funny and perfectly like exquisitely landed. It was like, it was mean without being too mean. He kind of had, it was like faux kind of concern for him following in the steps of Mike Pence, just beautifully done. And I thought to myself, I hadn't really thought about, honestly, I hadn't thought about Pete for this and watching that. I thought, you know, that would be a, that would be a shoot, shoot the moon kind of a, if it's a turn the page campaign, there's a very strong, there's a strong case for it. Yes. In almost every, absolutely at the sort of meta level, uh, it, it would be less of a turn the page campaign because he's also in the administration and carries some of that. But yeah, but she's uh, already got that. But, but go ahead. The, uh, but no, no. I'm listen. Uh, first of all, he's a great. I mean, he's a good friend of mine, and I uh, I've known him since he was a you know the young mayor of uh, South Bend, and I've been impressed by him from the moment I. Uh, I met him, so I would I would never. Uh, it would make be good for EVs. Me. There you go. I've been. Yeah. He's peeled yeah. me off, Gina Raimondo. Yeah. Uh, the fact that all three choices are strong, by the way. There's no clear, obvious home run here, but the, the big message, future thing, I think, is appealing, and a great athlete is appealing. But Kelly can make an argument too, so you can't discount him. Two other names that have been mentioned are Governor Cooper of North Carolina. I'm told that he he wants to run for the Senate in a couple of years. I'm told also that he's really concerned because their constitution allows the lieutenant governor to uh, govern, actually govern while he's at a state. And they've got, you know, Mark Robinson, the lieutenant governor's running for the Senate. They're a big MAGA guy. Yeah, and crazy. there's a concern of what he would do when he was out of state. So I don't know that he's going to even want to be. It's kind of a greasy choice. And then you know, Andy, trying Andy Bashir's trying, Andy Bashir, the very talented governor of, uh, Kentucky has been auditioning the last couple of days, but you know what? Back to the big, the deep end of the pool. I, I don't know about throwing him into the deep end of the pool here, yeah. and I don't know whether those guys help you win these northern industrial states. You know? Yeah, I, I have doubts about that. I was going to ask you though. I have doubts about that in both those cases. I wouldn't mess with the North Carolina thing. It just seems too. Seems to yeah, be too if much they're going to pull a lucky thing there, it, you don't have to pick a local VP. It, it's greedy. It's it's that it doesn't give you much. To come back to Kelly, and this is a question. There's only one of us, I believe, who lives uh, part time in 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 a, in a battleground state. I've been, actually, David, you've lived in two in some ways. Yeah. In, 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 tell vote, me about two, and, Chicago and, and vote way. in a yeah. third. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But in Arizona, like how I, this is a question. I haven't been to Arizona in in calendar year twenty twenty four. Is it They're, gone? I, I don't know. Why is you it never gone? Come down a visit. Uh, I I think that the southern tier states, the the sort of Sun Belt states, the uh, soda states are you know maybe she gives them a better chance in 
in North Carolina, a slightly better chance in North Carolina between the African American population and the sort of, you know, college, uh, you know, tech kind of community that's uh, grown there and so on. Uh, but the general but I'm sense. Asking if, I'm asking about Arizona. I'm asking about Arizona specifically because if if you can't if Kelly wouldn't get you over the hump in Arizona, I don't think there's much of an argument for Kelly. I mean, I think he's a strong strong candidate, but like if you're not going to be able to win Arizona, what's the point? Well, the point is that he is a guy who signifies moderation, who touches a lot of uh, funny bones with his, and and who frankly, um, he's you know he he can't. And I'm not making the argument like I would if I were to be pressed against a wall, I'd say, what helps you win Pennsylvania? And I would make that the, 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 yeah. the, first, uh, the first argument. But Kelly, uh, you know, one thing you want to ask yourself is, how is this person going to hold up? How is this person going to hold up? I think Buttigieg has cleared that bar, you know, dramatically. Um, you know, I think Shapiro is a, is a stud performer, but uh, hasn't been at that level. Uh, Kelly, you know, my, I guess my theory on Kelly is he's been through tough races. But more than that, if you're if you're a fighter pilot and an astronaut, and you're and you've survived something terrible with your uh, with your wife, you 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 are comfortable with stress, and you know how to handle it. And uh, so you know. But uh, listen, they're all I, strong. Yeah. yeah, they're all yeah. those are all no, three good choices. They're three good choices. Yeah. And uh, again, what does it do to win Pennsylvania? I agree, and to a lesser extent, Michigan and Wisconsin. Uh, but also, what does it tell us about her? Because it's her. That's the real definition. She's what counts, you know. So the decision is a message, and what message does she want to sell? Yes, exactly. Uh, and that that becomes, frankly, I think a fork in the road between Buddha Judge. And, and make the big macro move or Shapiro slash Kelly. No, but but it's not that's not obvious. Yes, you're right. That is the fork in the road between them. But the other thing about Kelly is if the immigration thing is going to be a big issue, uh, he's someone who's been, you know, uh, you know, he's been a critic of the administration, but he 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 is, you know, he is he's credentialed uh, on that issue and he can help certify her. Right, she right. could he say can he's going to he, he, she it. could say he's going to run the, the issue. You know, I mean, so though, though it's weird. The karma of it's weird because it's like, oh, the old VP on the border trick again. She's doing the I don't know. It's like a log on an important fire and a good log. But does that fire need more fuel or he can fight it? It's a tricky one. A, but he can play there. That's absolutely everything right. about everything about the Pete thing feels to me like it reminds me of, of Clinton picking Gore in a good way. I mean, in that you're like, what are you doing? You like change the, 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 the to Mike's point, the big turn the page thing, and it's a generational. You know, it's bold. It doesn't it feel it calculated. Is, it, is, it, it doesn't is, feel but, calculated in the way that Shapiro and and Kelly both yeah, are going to be read as past as electoral calculation. You know. Yeah. And, and I I hear all of that. And the question just is, you know, Clinton and Gore were too, uh, they were young, they were future oriented. They also were from the South. They also were white men. Uh, so you're not throwing, uh, they also felt, you know, they were comfortable campaigning in, you know, those kinds of venues. Uh, you're throwing a lot of change at people. Uh, and the question is, Though, yeah, I agree with that. But the one thing people ask me during these VP things, because there's always like, well, pick your opposite and create. And that's all. Pick yourself. That's what Clinton really did. Another, yes. not an inch of daylight. Yes. Yeah. When you when you go pick somebody young to bounce the ticket or purple, it, the differences become the story. You want a and buddy that was movie. The brilliance you sort of, of the want a buddy. You want, some part of it you want. You, if you're if, if if turn the page is what you're selling, you want a buddy movie. Whereas, right, right. What, you, you know, Obama you, you, wanted right. something different. Bush wanted something different. They needed to have the ballast of an older guy. I, I used to joke in speeches, if you're Robert Redford's agent and they call you up to do Iron Man 7, uh, you're going to say, great, Bob's out jogging right now. He's ready for it. Well, this is going to be a two-hander. He's got a sidekick, Titanium Man. We're thinking Brad Pitt. If you're the agent, you say, well, we love Brad, but we're thinking the sidekick should be Abe Vigoda. You know, <laughs> you don't want contrast. How many people on this? How many people who listen to this podcast know who Abe Pagoda is? I'm just curious. All, all eight it's going to say a lot about your demo. About Biden's your demo. Biden's nodding. Here. Our listener Joe Biden is nodding. Go on our website, and there's like a a, a 1980s uh, translator, 1970s, <laughs> 80s, 70s. Uh, yeah. So so you can follow along with my. Well, you didn't even catch my Rickles poll when I introduced Puck. 
Yeah, your, no, your, I heard, your new, I heard new hockey puck. Yeah, anyway, I got David, it. David, no get worries. us out of this. So, um, two two things I, would, I just want to touch on. We should take a, a some quick questions because we haven't been recently. Yeah, we've been bad. Uh, one is uh, uh, we should mention what is obvious, but one of the problems that Biden had was this lack of enthusiasm among. Uh, young voters, lack of enthusiasm among minority voters. This was implicit in our uh, conversation before. She she can help bring that base back. Uh, one advantage that he had was he was doing better with older voters. He was doing yeah, better he with had white, vote, white white you know white. He didn't he wasn't doing great with white working class voters, but you know, uh, but he. Picked up a few points there over, say, a Hillary Clinton when he got elected in 2020. These are open questions. So uh, we'll see about that. The last thing is debates. Now, um, you know, there was the thought that there probably wouldn't be another debate if uh, Biden stayed on the ticket, that Trump wouldn't do it. Um, do you think there will be a debate? Will Trump do it? He was saying the other day, well, maybe we should switch to some Fox moderators, which suggested to me that he wanted to bring in some backup uh, uh, for himself. Uh, but, um, uh, will there be a debate? And that, that seems to me like a great opportunity for Harris. Yeah. If she's strong, there will be, cause he can't not do it. Cause he'd be losing. If she's imploded, uh, into the hipster San Francisco liberal campaign, then he can probably. Not gonna, I don't think win. that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen either. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to. I think we're back to. I think we're back to now, unless there's some catastrophic thing, and God knows there could always be. I think we're back to a, a, a toss-up uh, margin of error race again, where she's she's the underdog, um, but but not by a lot. And I can't imagine Trump, given his ego. Uh, and and what his and what his yeah. audience demands of him. I mean, imagine Trump turning to the 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 MAGA base and saying and making excuses for why he won't go head to head with 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 Harris. They should have gone after him, John. Yesterday, when he said yeah. he wanted he wanted to switch moderators. Yeah. I mean, talk about a, a sign a sign of weakness. They're too busy counting their money right now. David, yeah, well, they to, better, to worry they, about better they better be able to do two things at once, you know, or <laughs> 10 things at once. But it's a huge tell to Trump because whenever Trump is working the ref and complaining he's fixed is when he's scared and cornered. Totally. So they're in his head now, which is worth a lot. They got to stay there. Offense. I still rate him a, a you know, a pretty substantial a sl- favorite in this race just because of the electoral challenges. Yeah, I agree uh, with that. Here. But I there's mean, a they, race now. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt. There was a race today where there wasn't uh, two days ago. You're back to where you were pre-debate, I would say, right? Where she, where he's the he's yeah, look, the leads better, are what right? they, they are. Maybe as as Mike said, maybe it's a little better. But you know, she's now back to we're back in. She's as I said, I think she's a she's an underdog, but a slight underdog, and and it's a margin of error race where you know we've got this sprint and a lot. It's going to be a lot more fluid too, which is so the key I, thing. I, Instead of being set in stone. The thing is now kind of up for grabs again. And so being a slight underdog is like, you can live with that. So Kamala and everybody listening, I have a plot and then we can go to the music. The plot is simple. Send a couple of gorillas out from DNC headquarters today (coughs) to whichever of his luxurious retreats Brother Axelrod is at. Snatch him, put him in a room, and he has to program the messaging of the convention. Uh, Because the convention could go to the wrong way. Uh, on the celebration of, uh, you know, one part of America versus another, rather than the meat and potato stuff that can win the election. Thank, thank, and I thank you for the kind all, words. But I'm I'll ruining tell you your life, I know. But that's a short-term assignment you would do very well It's at. not necessary because uh, the person who's programming the convention is Stephanie Cutter, our old friend, who programmed the 2020 convention, which to my mind was maybe the most effective really well convention yeah that I've seen and I was involved in several. So I have no I have no lack of confidence in the convention team. I think the convention's gonna really, really be good. Uh, it just occurs to me now, Axe, is it the case that given your your the fact that you've had that that those season tickets and that box at the United Center for, you know, a hundred years that you're yeah. going to still be able to occupy that same box during the convention. Um, but is that like permanently your, uh, like a condo for you? I think I'm going to be in the city, uh, in the CNN box, uh, at the uh, convention <laughs> yakking about this stuff. But anyway, hit the music.
If you have a question for the hack, send it to us. Use email, join the future, hacksontap at gmail.com, hacksontap at gmail.com, or you can leave a voice message on your phone, email it to us, use your name, or call our secret Chicago line. Just keep it short. We're, we're the blowhards here, and use your name. That number, 773-389-4471. I'll repeat it because who can remember that? 773-389-4471. Mike Murphy, Paul wants to know, I keep hearing how MAGA is the future of my Republican Party, but can MAGA really survive if it's not winning general elections? MAGA has a terrible track record in general elections. What if Trump and other MAGA candidates lose badly this fall? You're like tickling uh, his, <laughs> all, all, his, all his erogenous zones here. Oh, go, Paul, go ahead. Paul. Um, <laughs> let's go off camera. Let's go off camera for that. I don't want to yeah, see yeah. Mike tickle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, turn camera. off the zoom uh, Paul Paul great question and it's true losing doesn't work so uh if Trump's a two-time America's biggest loser and he even got beat by a girl yeah I think uh, some of the mega populism is here to stay but there won't be the cult of uh, orangutan personality and parties are ultimately pragmatic or they go away so yeah I, I think uh, uh an outcome of Republican rubble uh which as a conservative, it's hard to get excited about, but if it's the price of no more Trump, I uh, I do it. I, I'm reminded of a friend of mine in the car business who said, yeah, you know, when we bombed Germany into rubble, they built all brand new plants. So did Japan. And next thing you know, they're our biggest competitors. So I think there will be a Republican reset if Trump blows this election. And I would give him the edge right now. But uh, we'll, we'll see if this campaign really takes off. I thought you. I thought uh, yeah. Go, I thought you were going to make a Barney Rubble reference from the Flintstones and going back to the Stone Age. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, give me one. All right, for David Axelrod from Drew, can you discuss the pros and cons of Biden withdrawing from the campaign versus resigning the presidency? Oh, good question. This is uh, Drew. You know something that the Republicans are pounding. Well, if he can't run, he shouldn't be president. I think it's a ridiculous argument. Uh, uh, because just because you say I'm not going to run to serve another four years doesn't mean you can't finish the next five months. But the uh, you know if he had resigned, then Kamala Harris would be president, and that would invest her with um, you know uh, the a stature and perhaps some of the advantages of incumbency, but also the disadvantages of incumbency, uh, and. Uh, she would have to govern to boot between now uh, and November. So uh, on balance, uh, I'm not sure that uh, it would have netted out uh, that well. In any case, uh, it was a lot for him to withdraw from uh, this race. I do think he wants to finish things, most notably uh, some sort of uh, peace deal uh, in Gaza, between now and when he leaves, uh, and he deserves the right to do that. David, don't you think that it's a that that argument is on the merits? You could, there are counter arguments to it, but on the the way the Republicans are making it is it's clearly the argument they're they're just using that argument. The well, if he's not fit to run, he's not fit to serve as a kind of pretext for the other argument they want to make, which is that she was involved. Yeah, in the that she was complicit. Right? That's Absolutely, of, that's all it is. That's all this is. Right? Is that and and from that standpoint. You know, the the reality, of course, is that, you know, Joe Biden has proved as so far we have no evidence Joe Biden's not pretty good at being president and his performance skills in under pressure I, and, I, and and on television well, in front are, of cameras, are, are, yeah. are terrible in front, in front of cameras are terrible. But we have no evidence to suggest that he's not with with the support of the whole executive branch, that he's not making decisions well on the, yeah. on the, and and she running can the attest country. To that. I don't you know, yeah. I, I don't think, you know, we'll see how far that goes. As I said, I think that's somewhat of a vulnerability for everyone involved. Yeah. But, you know, I think she can handle that. John uh, yes. Heilman, Brian asks an interesting question as a re since we were talking about the VP. As a registered independent in Maricopa County, Arizona, which is the uh, county, the major county around Phoenix, 62% of the vote there. I'd love to hear your thoughts on a Harris ticket that includes a reasonable Republican like Charlie Baker, who now runs the NCAA, Larry Hogan, who's now running for the Senate in Maryland, uh, or similar. I know it, it makes more sense to tap a Dem from a swing state, e.g. Shapiro, but a kid can dream, can he? 
Hmm. Uh, a kid can dream. We're all entitled to our dreams in America, Brian. But uh, I would say, here's what I'd say. You know, the kind of fantasies of these kind of crossover tickets uh, uh, appeal to a very slim number of uh, kind of, and probably in theory would appeal to a whole bunch of people. There's a lot of people in the country who like the idea of bipartisanship and 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 and, and easing the kind of bitterness of the partisan divide that we see in America. I don't think that is a voting matter. I mean, start with the fact that nobody votes for the bottom of the ticket. So how many votes does it actually get you? Probably none. It, it, it gets you a lot of, of kind of the high concept praise in the from the from <laughs> people like uh, in the in the in the press. You get a lot of the, the filter would love that kind of a pick. Uh, but I'll tell you what you'd lose is you'd lose a lot of Democratic enthusiasm. And the thing that Kamala Harris has going for her right now is the fact that she's got the party after all these months of being dispirited. In fact, I'd say m- months, the last three years lacking in Democratic enthusiasm. She suddenly, for the first time in this entire presidential cycle, has the Democratic Party jazzed. And the best way to kill that buzz would be to go pick a Republican and put him on the bottom of the ticket. I see the appeal at the high concept level I, in terms of what it would do to your your de- your, your grassroots fundraising, uh, your Boots on the ground, uh, the Democratic uh, enthusiasm and energy right now, it'd be, it'd be really pissing all over that. And I think it's for that reason alone as a non-starter. Yeah. Look, I think that in a race that uh, at one level is about democracy and how it functions about bringing the country together, I understand the appeal uh, of that. But a fusion ticket can very quickly become a confusion ticket. Uh, if you try and pair people who are uh, on many issues uh, quite different, and um, as we, I mean, learn- take take hacks and tap. Hacks on tap is a good point. You put you and Murphy together. What's that? Just yeah, a fucking train wreck, right there. It's, it's a, a train, train wreck. wreck. That's the yeah, thing. That's yeah. that's why you don't want to yeah. do this. Yeah, actually, Brian. In a nutshell, that's that's a good answer there. <laughs> Heilman, thank you so much. <laughs> Axe, great to talk to you. What a big historic week. We're going to have a, a lot to talk about. We'll see you next time. See you, Mikey. Murphy, Heilman, been a pleasure. We're going to have a lot to talk about in the weeks and months to come, so stay tuned and fasten your seatbelts. It's like paradise for hacks now. (laughs) Yes. Yes.